Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Councillor Andrew Weston. I'm the leader of Trafford Council and the Greater Manchester Combined Authority lead on digital work and skills. It's great to be speaking at this event today and to have the chance to talk about what we're doing here in Greater Manchester to create a world-leading digital city region. I'm going to talk a bit about our ambition, our approach and some of the priorities for us just now. And I'm also going to leave some time for Q&A at the end. I'll start by saying that, in spite of, and in some cases because of the ongoing challenges of the pandemic, our creative, digital and technology sector is booming. And it won't surprise you to know that our public sector is being digitised at a phenomenal pace. We're seeing global VCs seeking out our startups, investing in firms like Matillion and Peak AI, both of which, I'm pleased to say, are based in my borough of Trafford. Homegrown successes that are being valued in the billions and creating fantastic jobs here in Greater Manchester. We've seen a doubling of our undergraduate numbers in areas like computer science, and over 50% of our 100,000 students stay here once they graduate, more than in any other city region building us an amazing pool of talent. And we've recently been recognised by Time Out as the world's best city region, after San, world's best city rather, after San Francisco and Amsterdam. Now I think that's a little low down in my view, but it's excellent recognition nonetheless. So our ambition won't surprise anyone here. We tend to be a place that doesn't stand still. But then again, this is the place where Rolls met Royce, where Emmeline Pankhurst acted, where Turing studied of factory records, New Order and Oasis, indeed of Marcus Rashford, a place of deeds, not words. But there's more to our ambition. We want to do this differently. With the greatest of respect to London, we don't want to be London. We want our people to be at the centre of our approach, as they are our greatest asset and our pause. And moving on to our approach. So how are we doing this? In early 2020, we launched the GM Digital Blueprint. It includes five priorities and two enablers. In many ways, it was crowdsourced, which speaks vol volumes about our approach. I'm not going to walk you through the blueprint as you can read it online, but I do want to focus on the ethos behind it. This is important because we'll only achieve our ambition if it is a collective ambition. Success isn't in any one organisation or individual's gift. We must work together. Fortunately, we're quite good at that. We have that northern spirit of knowing our neighbour and that long history of collaboration. Of course, there's lots that we're doing across our public sector. We convene and energise key groups like the Digital Inclusion Task Force and the Disabled People's Panel. We lobby and apply pressure to government in areas like skills and investment. We encourage businesses to come here through our Inward Development Agency or Midas. We support startups through the growth company and skills programmes. We help traditional industries to digitise through programmes like Made Smarter. We create fantastic environments to, to work in, like Ashton Old Baths. We support university-led research. We build digital and data capabilities like the 2,000 700 kilometres of dark fibre we're finishing off and we help people get online. I could go on, but you get the picture. Each of these could be the topic for their own discussion, so I thought it would be best to use the rest of this time to touch on some of our greatest priorities. As I said, the digital blueprint puts people at the heart of our plans through co-design collaboration and aiming for a more inclusive approach. And through this, we will ensure the benefits of a digital Greater Manchester reach all of our communities. 
Our people in Greater Manchester should feel empowered and have their lives bettered by the opportunities that digital provides. Skills and talent lie at the centre of this. Earlier this year, the Government published its Skills for Jobs white paper, which sets out the reforms it intends to make to national further education, including measures to bring employers and business groups closer to education providers. In Greater Manchester, our employers already play a significant role with a range of programmes that invite their insights and empower them to shape the city region's talent pipeline. These reforms offer us a further opportunity to build on our ambitions and bring together all education providers and Job Centre Plus to translate what employers need and develop programmes accordingly. And we're already developing an integrated package to support young people, bringing together employment and skills support, such as Bridge GM, the Young Persons Guarantee, and funds like the Fast Track Digital Workforce Fund. Our skills system must respond to the needs of our residents and our businesses at all levels and in all sectors. Whether it's a young person first entering the workforce or a person who finds themselves needing to upskill or reskill for the post-COVID economy, we need to ensure the courses and qualifications on offer are relevant to the city region's labour market. Putting employers at the heart has always been part of, our, of the remit of our Employment and Skills Advisory Panel, which I chair, and we will continue to ensure strong relationships exist in Greater Manchester through this. We also want to work with industry and government to expand these programmes to reach more people across all communities in the city region. Building on the success of some of the brilliant programmes across our ecosystem, such as Innovate Her and Digital Futures. Digital opportunities need to be for everyone, regardless of their background. And this leads me to digital inclusion, an area that is just as critical. We have over 250,000 digitally excluded people here and about a million more who have surprisingly limited digital skills, from children who are experts on TikTok but can't write an email, to vulnerable older people needing to see their doctor but only being offered an online appointment. In October 2020, we launched our digital inclusion agenda for change with a bold ambition to make Greater Manchester a 100% digitally enabled city region. And we set up a sector and industry-wide collaboration to try to get everyone to help the Digital Inclusion Task Force. There's no national digital inclusion fund in England, so everyone needs to do their bit. Like by building digital inclusion into the design of their service, as banks have done for many years, as the DWP is now doing, and how we're looking to design into the provision of primary care services in Greater Manchester. Access to the digital world should be a basic human right. Everyone in Greater Manchester, whatever their age, location or situation, should be able to benefit from the opportunities that digital brings. If that's not an, oper uh, an ambition for a world-leading digital city region, I don't know what is. So to close, we remain in the throes of battling the consequences of the pandemic, and we continue to focus on supporting the significant and immediate needs of those impacted most by the situation, and also on building a safe environment for the people of Greater Manchester as lockdown lifts. Clearly, we'll need to react to the announcements of last night and the growing concern over the Omicron variant too. But we know that the health and well-being of our people and our economy are intrinsically interconnected, and we've been amazed by people's ability to evolve and adapt to a very difficult world almost overnight. We've been moved by the kindness of strangers and neighbours alike, reminding us of the real power of local communities. But at the same time, 
We're looking ahead, building for a better future. We're creating a place where anything digital is possible. Thank you. Happy to take any questions that people might have. And if I can't answer them, Phil Swan from the Greater Manchester Combined Authority Digital Team is here to assist. Questions. So the question was, what could Greater Manchester do to lobby government for a national digital, digital inclusion fund? And I think the answer from my perspective is very much showing the benefits that we've been able to deliver as a direct result of the work that we're doing here in Greater Manchester and suggesting that with that fund we could take that national. You know, that there, is, there is so much work to do. I gave examples of young people who are um, you know, wonderful on social media but haven't got a clue about you know, how to function in the working world um, or how even to write an email, but also that, that issue about older people who can't access um, basic primary care services and see their GP. These are issues that the government cannot ignore. So I think going to them with a proposal, brokering a conversation about potential solutions will be really important. And look, this isn't as shiny as levelling up funds or towns funds or anything else that might be coming forward, but it is, in my view, more important. And the beauty of the digital world is that it impacts us all, not just small towns or, or cities in certain parts of the country. But if we can get a digital inclusion fund, we can move everybody forward and genuinely level us all up. We do have the advantage in terms of playing into government now of the Member of Parliament for Manchester Central being appointed the Shadow Secretary of State um, last week. And, and I know that we're keen to talk to, to her about um, how we can build a, a case collaboratively to, to move us forward in that area as well. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Phil. I think, the, um, I think they covered pretty much everything there, Councillor. Um, one of the really interesting points, there was a debate in Parliament about three weeks ago about this. And, you know, the, the National Digital Inclusion Strategy it was last updated in 2014. And, you know, if, if the last 18 months, two, 20 months has taught us anything, yeah. you see, it's says, booking online, GP appointments, almost an assumption that society is digitised, but actually we're not there yet, we're absolutely not there. And the fact that we're looking at this so closely in Greater Manchester, uh, it just echoes the situation on the whole of the rest of the country and the conversations we're having with other regions, uh, with London um, and West Midlands and others. Everyone is, you know, this is a national issue and actually we really do need to address it on a national level. So question about whether we have a place data strategy to help us um, with our net zero ambitions in the city region. I'm going to come to Phil on that one, if that's OK. It, it's a really good question. And actually, we're doing more and more around place data at the moment. Um, we created a thing called Mapping GM a few years ago, which we, where we pull a huge amount of data together. And actually, we're looking at refreshing that at the moment. We have a very significant public sector decarbonisation scheme, for example, and, we, and which I can't remember how many endpoints there are. It's, over, it's in the thousands. All of these are going to be pulling in monitoring data. We were, having, we're speaking to some of the big um, telcos at the moment about their data sets around movement of people in places and how we could use some of that data more effectively. For example, looking at high streets, looking at movements of people, how that might overlay with, with, with um, air quality and how that could be used to, for example, suggest how people might cycle to work in routes that actually would be um, would, would, would put them at less risk of going through poor air, but also help us understand uh, how effective some of the work, and for example, around bee lines, the, is it, I can't remember how many millions are going into that development of, the, of, 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 of those cycle pathways, but ensuring that we're, we're making the most of that. Now, 
There's a whole set of initiatives and some of the capabilities that are being built that underpins that. We do need to bring that into us and articulate that as a, as, a, as a single data strategy for the city region. And that's something we're, we're really actively looking at at the moment. It's been very priority led though. What are the things we need to do around environment, around mobility, around clean air? Uh, there are elements that relate to, to um, uh, uh, other pandemic and, uh, information like you know, footfall and, and high street renewal and so on. Bring, so we have the capabilities around that we're looking at how we're responding to that demand from those different areas. And uh, we do need to bring that together, though, in a, in a simple narrative. I think we've been quite heads down with getting on and doing the doing, but that narrative does need to come together. Any other questions at all? No, Brill. Well, thank you very much for coming, and thanks to everybody um, watching online. Obviously, if anybody wants to chat afterwards, Phil and I will be here for, for a few minutes. Um, but, but thank you very much for your time. Cheers.